If you're trying to make good vodka, you will need to assess its quality and the main means of doing this is tasting it. Gas chromatography is a supplementary option which I may return to in another video. Tasting has a bad reputation because of the pretensions that winos use to beclown themselves, but unlike them, our task is necessary for improving the quality of our product rather than an affectation for the purpose of showing how sophisticated we are. I have no training in vodka tasting, but I've had to do quite a bit, and in this video I share what I have found out about it. Firstly, method. For vodka tasting, I find it easier to actually drink it rather than swill it around in the mouth and spit it out as winos do. That's because a lot of the bad flavours in vodka that we try to avoid are bitter, that are tasted on the back of the tongue, and are best appreciated when the liquid is drunk rather than spat out. For tasting, vodka needs to be diluted to about 30% alcohol with water, and it needs to be at room temperature of around 20 degrees centigrade. The reason is to maximise the performance of the sense of taste. Iced vodka is a nice drink, but the low temperature diminishes the sensitivity of taste. In fact, it may be a good idea to ice vodka if it's not very good for this reason. Similarly, if the alcohol content is over about 30%, it creates an overwhelming not so much taste as sensation that masks subtle differences in flavour. If you're starting with azeotropic alcohol, diluting it down to about 30% means adding about two and a half parts of water to one part spirit, and any flavours in the water are going to appear in the mixture, so take care what water you use. Most of the chemicals we're interested in have relatively little effect on the aroma of vodka, the main exception being acetone, an undesirable chemical. Methanol, an even more undesirable chemical, has much less effect on smell, which is why it's less detectable and so more dangerous. As these smells are subtle, it's quite difficult to capture them, and I suggest putting about 40 ml of vodka water mixture in the bottom of a wine glass, so that there's a large amount of air above the vodka that you can breathe in to maximise smell sensitivity. When you're starting out making vodka, tasting is all about identifying things you want to get rid of, rather than tastes you want to keep. There's not much subtlety about this, particularly when you're doing pot distillation with a poorly controlled column. If you're using such a system, you'll become accustomed to the different tastes that appear and disappear throughout a batch distillation run, though in most cases you won't know what chemicals are responsible for these tastes. For example, there is a taste I refer to as industrial waste, and another as pig's arse, terms that have a negative connotation for a reason. Assessing these tastes doing batch distillation, I found that what I thought was an acceptable product only appeared about two-thirds of the way through the whole run. Now to comparison. It is easier to judge different vodkas against each other by comparing them than it is by drinking them in isolation, and this applies to all tasting. When comparing two vodkas, you need to dilute both to the same concentration using the same source of water. After doing it for a while, you begin to recognise and remember tastes and can make a fair assessment of a vodka taste in an isolation, but this is never going to be as precise as comparative testing. Further, you want to recruit family and friends as a tasting panel. Their ability to compare tastes will be as good as yours, but without the practice they will not be so able to judge a vodka in isolation. To begin with, you'll likely be comparing versions of your own product, such as different cuts, with or without carbon filtration, or double versus triple distillation. Once you've got over the problem of the worst taste and you're starting to home in on a nice product, you'll need to start comparing with stable references. Those I use are Smirnoff vodka and distilled water. I choose Smirnoff because it is the purest vodka with the least taste. That doesn't necessarily make it the best vodka. If you look at vodka comparison videos and articles online, you'll see that Smirnoff often comes in the top 3 or top 5, but it's rarely ranked top, showing that some of the tastes that get into vodka, either from spirit or water, are quite popular. Smirnoff is triple distilled and extensively charcoal filtered. It is the cleanest, purest vodka on the market, which makes it the least offensive, but arguably the most boring, so not necessarily the best. 
However, this makes it an ideal reference point against which you can judge what should be added or taken out of the vodka you're making. The second reference material I use is distilled water, because so much of the taste of vodka is determined by the water it's mixed with. Distilled water is a tasteless pure form of water which again is a good reference for comparison with other waters. Using these two references enables you to determine what flavours are coming from the water and what from the spirit. Finally, to involving other people. Taste is variable from one person to another, so when you have a product you judge to be of good quality, recruiting other tasters helps. It also helps in the case of blind tasting, which is harder to organise on your own. I am planning further videos on multiple distillation and carbon filtering, with results that depend on this method of tasting. It's not difficult or a rarefied skill. It's just a question of setting up the situation to maximise your discriminatory powers of taste and applying your sense of taste with detached objectivity.